All right, welcome to my first episode of HBCU-ish, my Instagram live series highlighting queens that go to historically black colleges. I am Kayla Torre, the National American Miss Teen, and today I have as a guest Miss Howard University. First, I'm going to talk about her and all the amazing things, read her little bio, and then I'm going to have her do a mini introduction for herself, and then we're going to get into all the amazing questions. I'm so excited. Let's start. Sicily, Sicily, I said it wrong. Then Sicily, Cecily, Cecily, yes, yes. <laughs> Cecily Davis is a graduating senior musical theater major from Atlanta, Georgia. While she loves to sing, dance, and act, there's nothing more that brings her joy to her life than helping others. She sees a problem and in turn, she tackles it. Always ready to be the change that she wishes to see. She currently serves as the 84th Miss Howard University for the 2022 to 2023 school year. Wow, welcome Miss Howard University. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing awesome. Like I said, I'm so honored to have you as my first guest for episode number one. So can you please tell me about yourself? Maybe talk about something that you did not put in your bio. Let us know who you are. Yes. So like Kayla said, I am a musical theater major um, with hopes and aspirations of Broadway. You know, that is always a good old goal for musical theater um, students. Um, I am really passionate about advocacy the advocacy in the black community, as well as in the arts. Um, one of the biggest things that I wish to do in my career is to create safe spaces for black artists to voice their, you know, their artistry. A lot of times we're stifled through due to discomfort of our truths. So I want for black artists to always be reminded that, you know, we can stand in our power and tell our truths and tell our stories. Um, I want to bring more I want to reemerge the black community into the arts. So providing for more visibility of cabarets and orchestra concerts and symphonies and musicals and plays instead of just the normal TV and film and hip hop and R&B. Um, so that's some of my career aspirations. I also want to be a mayor and I also want to go to law school. So I, I have a lot of different, you know, pools that I dabble in, um, but that's way far down later in life. I have a I have big dreams, let's say that. <laughs> yes, big dreams that I know you will be able to achieve. That is so amazing. And you talked about the arts and I am an actor myself. So I really understand the importance of getting the word out about the arts and educating the youth on that. So I love that you're able to put your passion and also the ability, that your honor that you have of being Miss Howard University together. So I think that's amazing. Let's start with the questions, guys. So first, tell me about your experience in pageantry and why you began competing. So I began competing in my first pageant. Um, okay, so I used to always watch Toddlers and Tiaras with my mom on TLC. That was my TV show. And I used to be like, dang, these girls are crazy. They talk to their mom crazy. Um, just everything that went into a pageant, I was just like, I didn't understand. Like, you had to get a coach. You had to spend lots of money on fancy dresses. And sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. It was just such a world that was foreign to me that when I saw my middle school had a competition, I was like, okay. I used to watch Toddlers and Tiaras, so I know I'm not going to do that. But I do think I'll have a good chance at winning. So I ran from the sixth grade and I won the sixth grade, the seventh grade and the eighth grade. Um, I went to a high school that did not have any type of pageant competitions for real, for real. Although I was homecoming princess my senior year, but that really wasn't a pageant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I got to Howard and I was like, okay. I have my major in musical theater and Howard has pageantry. Let's dibble and dabble in to see what HBCU pageantry is like. I wanted to be Miss Freshman in my freshman year, but unfortunately I didn't get my application in on time. So I was like, dang, that sucks. And then I found out they have Res Life Court. I said, oh, they have it all. So then 
I went for that and I became the um I became the 2019-2020 Miss College Hall North and so that was my very first pageant at Howard. And that is so amazing. I know you said that you watched Halls and Tears and I think that even if you're, I feel like the experience is definitely different if you're not a pageant girl now watching Tallas and Tiaras. That was definitely a show that I used to watch with my entire family. Yes. Um, so I find that also very cool. And I think that that's a connection that the majority of us pageant girls have. I don't know about you, but do people, when they see that you have like a pageant title, do they ask you like, oh, is that like Tallas and Tiaras? Because I always get that sometimes. Um, no, I'll say for like me as Miss Howard, mm -hmm. a lot of times people will be miseducated and think that I'm um, a homecoming queen okay. because of the fact that lots of times universities only have, you know, a homecoming mm -hmm. queen, but you have a long lasting history of campus queens due to the fact black women were not allowed to compete for Miss America and Miss USA. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is, I mean, it's so, uh, amazing that um that hbcus are still allowing girls to have that privilege of having a title especially since of course we didn't have that privilege a while ago but i will say that pageantry is definitely changing so much and i'm just happy that there are so many changes and that it's evolving so that is one of the positive outcomes of all of this and you are the 84th miss howard yes ma'am have been able to have the privilege of having a long legacy and you'll be a part of that legacy in the future so can you please tell me how that feels and do you sometimes feel like it's a lot of pressure on you because there were 83 other queens before you yeah um i definitely feel excited to be a part of the legacy um my mama queens are so fantastic they're actresses they're doctors they're chemists they're just mothers their daughters their friends their mentors um i had the honor and privilege of starting the first well the first in a long time or it might be the first ever legacy walk at howard university hi sister at howard university and i we, I want to say from 1986 to 2022 from present, that's the lineage of Mr. and Ms. Howard that we had present at the homecoming game. So I spent months reaching out to everyone, having them send, you know, message chains off to all of their previous queens and just trying to get the message out that I want to meet everybody. Like I was so eager. And so I was glad that I reached out because now I have such a, a big old family um, with such a rich legacy and rich history. I feel like they pour a lot into me, especially when I went to compete for the title of this National Black College Alumni Hall of Fame back in September, which I placed first runner up for. Um, and it was just such a, Thank you, thank you. It was such a wonderful opportunity, and to have the support of my mama queens, it was, it was heartwarming. That is so amazing, and I loved how you reminded me about the competition you went to. It was in New York, correct? Oh uh, no, it was in Atlanta. Okay, it was in Atlanta. Yeah. Please talk to me about that because that is so interesting. Tell me about your experience, how you were able to do that, how you were eligible. Talk about that because that is so exciting. So um, Miss National Black College Alumni Hall of Fame is a competition for HBCU queens to compete essentially for the title of Miss HBCU. Um, it was such a wonderful opportunity to bond with my sister queens. You know, over the summer we have conferences such as NASAP and HBCU Kings and Queens in which we have the opportunity to meet each other, bond, learn about leadership skills, learn about things that we can bring back to our university and our communities. And these pageants and competitions, it was a competition, but it was also a conference. So we got the chance to sit and um, give back to the community. We went to high schools and middle schools, talked to some of the youth in Atlanta. And being that I was from Atlanta, it was very nostalgic. So it was just like, I was in my home state. I was feeling good, you know, feeling very, um, encouraged to go out there and tell my truth. Uh, so this pageant, 
it was my first national pageant and i was so nervous um i was working on the mr and miss freshman pageant at howard and so their pageant was literally the day before i flew to atlanta for my competition so i was making sure that they were okay making sure that all of my stuff was okay so it was a lot going on and one of my babies just joined actually that ran for mr freshman um oh. yes but but we got the opportunity to showcase to the university what I was going to do um, at the competition. And that was, it was fun. They poured a lot of love into me before I went off. And I had preliminaries. That was the first time I went through a process such as preliminaries. Um, I had to go over my oratory in front of a room of a panel of judges. I had an interview and I had to do my talent. Um, at the end of the day, I went home with, I want to say $3,000. I got a $500 service award amongst all of the HBCU queens. We had to submit all of the work that we have done in the community. I submitted things such as obtaining $60,000 to produce the very first student produced musical on Howard's campus, as well as my partnership with community and schools to um, implement in HBCU communities, HBCU royal courts to help um, our high school students that are struggling. Um, I started HBCU fairs in my high school last year. I had seven HBCU student leaders. This year I had 22 HBCU student leaders. So we're constantly growing, you know, trying to showcase to my community that there are other options other than just Georgia State, UGA, and Kennesaw State. Um, these HBCUs, it doesn't have to be just Howard and FAMU and Spellhouse. You know, we have 107, pick one. But yeah, my pageant, it was such a, it was, it was a great opportunity. I was happy with my performance. I knew there was nothing else that I could have done to change the outcome. And I was so proud of myself and to the beautiful winner, my sister Joy, she did, she did the thing. She did the thing. So I was, I was not upset. And something that I want to highlight is that I feel like so many times people always ask you know well how do you feel if you didn't get home with the crown or maybe like you got first runner up or anything like that so i think that you're just a testimonial that when it's your time it's your time and whether or not you come home with our crown of that banner you are still a winner and that's something that i love to continuously promote because i know how it feels to get first runner up or even to not place that has happened to me many times but what is so important about pageantry and what it was founded on in my opinion is all about sisterhood and and teaching other girls to grow and i just find it so amazing that i feel like you're a testimony to that and congratulations for all the scholarships that you want i think that is phenomenal and quite honestly that is a once in a lifetime opportunity so i think that that is so amazing so next question i have seen the videos on the Howard royalty court and you guys are just so mesmerizing and I see that you guys do a little pageant wave or I wanted to know if you could demonstrate it and maybe teach us that do not yeah. know it is it's like yeah <laughs> we yes yes you did such a good job Remember okay. I tell you, um when you're trying to do this wave it's like rubbing lotion on a back so you want to literally rub the lotion on the back Oh and my goodness. Elbow is up. And sometimes people will forget to not cover their face. So make making sure that people can still see your face. And yeah. So do they, they teach you that after you win? How does that go? Um yes. So my mama queen taught me because I was on her court last year. Um so when I was Miss Chadwick Gables in College of Fine Arts, we have a session right after you win it's called boot camp and you're just here at howard for a very long time learning the rules and regulations of being a part of the royal court the image that we want to uphold for the upcoming school semester and just laying down like all of the rules that we want to you know as a family and as now elected student leaders so there we'll learn how to walk how to sit how to stand up because there's a lot of different cues that our coordinator gives us we don't just do things on a whim um so just to seem organized and put together 
Wow, that that is also so amazing. And I actually never knew that. So that is something that um that I just learned. I find that very fascinating that you guys kind of have a mini boot camp where they um teach you all that stuff. So that is great. And I know it's probably probably difficult in the moment or intense in the moment, but then afterwards you guys know it like a pro. So awesome. Can you tell me about your experience at Howard University and why you chose Howard? My experience at Howard, it has been a long one. Let's say that. Um, but it's also been short due to the fact that sadly COVID-19 took away, you know, 18 months of my education being in person. Um, I chose Howard University as it was, oh no, can you hear me? I can hear uh, you. You are good. All right. <laughs> uh, yes, I chose Howard University as it was the only HBCU that offered my major. Um, I am a BFA musical theater major. And so lots of HBCUs have a BA in theater, but a BFA is a specific degree in which is slightly different. Um, it's the actual performance of, so you're actually putting in the work and doing the shows versus the study of the arts, which is a BA. Um, yeah, I chose Howard. I fell in love as soon as I took my first tour on campus, honestly. Um, my junior year of high school, me and my best friend at the time and my family and my cousin, we did a road trip to different colleges trying to figure out where me and my best friend at the time were going to go to college so we drove from Atlanta all the way to New York because I could have swore I was going to school in New York I, NYU was a dream Juilliard was a dream Pace was a dream I was like it's one of those three and then I got up there to New York and I was like okay this is too much like it was very stimulating um and i didn't think that i was mature enough as an 18 year old to be in new york for myself so i made the executive decision that more homey feeling i needed a grass i needed a courtyard i needed a, a place to you know feel like i can escape from all of the noise and not constantly be drowning in like fast-paced you know environment so I left New York feeling kind of confused because I was like, what's going on? Like, I could have swear I was going to New York, but now I'm not liking it. I was like, okay, I still have Howard. I still have Elon. I still have NCAT that I'm looking at. But as soon as I got to Howard and I saw the grass and I saw founders and I saw just the, the presence of being on Howard's campus, I was like, oh, no, I have to come here. I have to come here. Um, I did a tour of the fine arts building and they told me day one, you know, we don't have a lot of resources. We are an HBCU, but one thing that we are going to teach you is how to be good. And I was like, okay, period. Cause that's all I need to be. It's, it's good. Just get me there. I don't care how you get me there, but make sure I booked at the end of the day. Uh, so I chose my four years of a home going home for COVID. It was very, 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 a uh, confusing time, you know, I wanted to stop doing school because of the fact that I was a new school theater major. So singing in a box and acting in a box and dancing in a box is not really conducive to, you know, the work that I want to be doing. So I, it, it took a lot of convincing from my parents. They were like, no, you're not dropping out, you're not dropping out. I was like, please, like, I don't want to be here. But I knew that I had to keep going because my parents said so. And clearly God had a different plan for me. He knew if I would have dropped out, I wouldn't be the 84th of Miss Howard University. He knew I wouldn't have the opportunities that I have now to, you know, speak in my truth and talk about my struggles and talk about how, you know, I want to make an impact on the world and all of the different trials and tribulations I went through at Howard to make me the woman I am now. Wow, that is amazing. I know for me, which I feel like, like similar to what you said, or it's just experience that I feel like a lot of us have when we're a senior in high school and we're trying to figure out colleges, is we will see a school and we'll be like, I want to go there. This is this is the school that I'm going to go there. Everything is going to, you know, we go when I go there. And I think sometimes rea either reality hits us or we actually kind of realize like, maybe I don't want to be here. Maybe I won't flourish as much um, as... Okay you know, being there. And I know for me, um, I really wanted to go to school out of state. I mean, you know, we, listen, me, me and her, we, I think we kind of like texted the like beforehand. Um, and I know for me, like, 
it kind of hit me last month where I was like, wow, I think I was better off. And I'm kind of happy that I stayed home because I feel like, I guess everyone's experience is different. I feel like me personally, I, I felt more comfortable at home. And like you said, you felt when you got on that Howard campus, you knew that that was your home. So I guess that's something that we could just tell everyone that pertaining to college, I guess, is, you know, it's okay to feel confused because that entire experience in itself is very, very stressful. Now, yes. let's talk about all the things, the arts, because you said you're a musical theater major, BFA, and I'm BFA acting, FTVC major. So we have a lot in common. Listen, guys, we're going to be starring in movies together. Okay. Together. You're going to you're gonna see a manifestation of course so talk to me about how you got into musical theater it's really so funny um i was five years old and i saw an ad in the newspaper that a high school near me heritage high school which ended up being my high school that i graduated from was doing the wizard of oz and they were looking for munchkins so i was five years old i was short and i was like mom i really 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 want to do this musical and she was like okay if you get your brothers to audition with you you can go to do the musical i was like okay bet my brothers are three years older than me um so i'm begging my brothers i'm like please 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 just come audition with me you you can do bad and like not get in like you just have to come with me so they came we all did our audition boom i'm like yes i know i'm gonna be in it Woohoo! we're waiting on the cast list waiting on the cast list cast list comes out and my brother's on the cast list and i am not so i'm just flabbergasted because no way you did not cast me and my brothers didn't even want to be in it so i told myself from that day on nobody was ever going to tell me no that i could not do what i wanted to do um and what i wanted to do was the arts so it turns out the same person who casted the show was the same person that got me into the musical theater program in my high school and she ended up being my director for four years while i was in high school um so that is my musical theater story she told me no and then saw it in you know a couple years later and i i told her at my audition when I was in the grid I said you remember um when you did Blizzard of Oz and then she said yeah I was like I auditioned to be a machine you told me no I'll never forget that and she's like oh my gosh you remember <laughs> oh my goodness that is so funny she was like oh my goodness you remember it now I would literally remember too because when I started acting I was around the same age as you um, I didn't do my first production I think until I was nine and similar story to you i did not get the role i wanted to we did aladdin and i was a tiger <laughs> so it was similar to you where i didn't get the role that i wanted but i think that having those experiences you could agree with me or you can disagree whatever you think i feel like for me it helped me a lot as an actor because it showed me that sometimes when you don't get the role that you want it's not necessarily that you aren't good enough but i feel like it's more of you know redirection maybe you need to work harder so i think that that's honestly helped me a lot um acting um so i find it so amazing that you have that story and that you're sharing that story because i feel like so many people think oh well you know you go to an amazing school for the arts so you must get every single role that you want or like your journey must be super easy so i find it great that you know you're being very transparent because it's definitely what we need now talking about the journey and your road can you speak to me about maybe a challenge that you've had that you overcome or maybe anything that you experienced or during a time that you really felt like wow i want to give up but then you knew not to give up um i can talk about like hmm, just being a musical theater major period um musical theater is such uh well musical theater and acting is a very subjective major um, being that, you know, math, one plus one is two. There is facts behind it. No one can ever, ever argue that. But to have professors say whether or not you're good at acting or singing, it's really up to, you know, what their personal preference is. You can have one professor that thinks you're amazing and one professor that's just like, oh, she yeah. right. So that's one of my biggest um, that was one of my biggest struggles, you know, first starting out was always seeking validation from people, whether it be my classmates or my professors, and putting on performances instead of, you know, standing in my truth and 
acting through a lens of truth instead of a performative nature. Um, it was really just this misconceived notion that I created in my brain that acting was acting, when acting is really just existing. A lot of people don't realize the work that it goes into the art that is musical theater and acting and drama. It's not just picking up the script and just talking. It's really deep diving into these characters and into their traumas, into their lives. Like, you have to make it so unbelievably believable that they think that it's you. They think that they're not getting their money wasted. They think they fall in love with you. They go through your heartaches and your pain. Um, and a lot of people, they just don't know that. So that was one of my biggest troubles. And just realizing that, like, not everyone is going to, you're not going to be everybody's crowd, like, in period, in life, whether it's friendships, whether it's artistry, whether it's your job. Sometimes you'll go through instances where you really, really want to connect or really, really want to have something, and it's okay for it to be a not right now, or it's okay for you to grow in it and not bask in the fact that it's not going the way that you want it to. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, yeah, I we have so many, I, 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 I keep saying, you know, like, I definitely agree. And like, you know, I experienced that. But I mean, I really do, um, especially when it comes to maybe having a teacher that thought you were fantastic. And then you meet another teacher that's kind of like, mm, I think you have a lot to work on. So I definitely agree with you when you said that the performing arts overall is so subjective. And I mean, it honestly is, which is why it's so important to love your craft and know that whether or not you get that lead role or maybe if you get into that top school that should not define you what should define you is you know the love that you have for um your passion i know that for me that's what has been you know keeping me going with acting because as you know performing arts it's really tough guys i mean there are so many amazing people there are so many great singers great dancers great actors so it is definitely um a hard industry but yeah i think i think we're doing a pretty good job yeah. what do you what do you think <laughs> <laughs> yes for sure okay guys we're gonna play a game and then we're gonna ask miss howard university a few more questions so we're gonna be playing the quote game black history month edition now on my last live on my national record miss teen account miss howard university did good she got two out of three i was very happy for her very good let's see if she gets started this time i really want her to get a three eight three out of three so we'll okay. see i think she's ready ready okay <laughs> okay let's do this guys okay in the end we will remember not the words of our enemies but the silence of our friends. Is that Barack Obama? Is that Beyonce? Or is that Martin Luther King? Oh. <laughs> you guys can help um, her down below. You guys can help her. That is a hard one. It is. Okay. For sure. um, I don't even know what would logically mm -hmm. it's the silence of our friends. Barack Obama? Barack Obama is it's incorrect. It was Monica King. <laughs> you were close though. I can't yeah, sound like it he was paid. Listen, I keep hitting her with the Martin Luther King quotes. I promise you, I'm done after this. Thank you, Martin Luther King, for all that you've done. Okay, next one. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is just life trying to move us in another direction. Ooh, I really like this one. Was this Maya Angelou, Michelle Obama, or Oprah? Kayla, you giving me all of these hard ones. I'm uh, sorry. I mean, these. What do you guys feel about these quotes? I mean, these these quotes are very impacting, you know. They're so good, very motivational. You got this. You got this. 
Um, there's no such thing as failure, there's only redirection. <laughs> Oprah. That is correct. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I feel like that definitely sounds like something Oprah would say. Yeah. <laughs> so inspirational. Okay, guys, we got one more for Miss Howard University. Be passionate and move forward with custo every single hour to every single day until you reach your goal. This is a little musical theater, acting, entertainment industry quote. Who was this by? Was it by Tyler Perry, Spike Lee, or Ava DuVernay? feel so bad that I don't know this one. Listen, um, it's okay. Um, repeat the quote one more time. Okay, sure. Be passionate and move forward with Custo every single hour of every single day until you reach your goal. Is it Spike Lee or Ava? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you got this. Listen, I, listen, I know you got this. I know. Uh, um. Come on, guys, help her. Help Miss Howard University. Uh, <laughs> um, Ava Duvernay. We're going to go with Ava. You? All right. <gasps> yes! Yay! Okay, guys, do you think I should give her another one since you got two out of three last time? Or do you think she just only deserves a two? I, I, think, I, I think we're good. My brain is um, trying to recuperate. Yes, it's trying to, it's trying to recuperate. Right. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. We're back. We're going to ask Miss Howard University a few more questions. Then we're gonna, and if you guys have any questions, please comment down below. I mean, anything. So I'm going to ask you some Black History Month questions. Okay. Um, growing up for you, were there any traditions or maybe celebrations that you and your family did for Black History Month? And if so, tell us. Yeah, so for Black History Month, me and my family, we will always do the Martin Luther King um, Day Parade in Atlanta, and we will always go to either soup kitchen, some type of volunteer work, which is why I feel like community service is so embedded into, like, my day-to-day -day life and just my overall notion for life um, because of the fact that my parents, you know, they were just like, you're going to serve your community. I was like, all right, that. I find that so fantastic that your parents instilled in you the importance of generosity and giving back to your community. It's actually similar to my family. Um, we also, growing up, volunteered together a lot. And I think that, for me, that helps me a lot with being a generous person and also loving to give back. For me, during Black History Month, one of my favorite things that my family and I would do it was not during Black History Month, but I always felt like it was something that could have been during Black History Month. We would go to a dance at the Community Dance Center, and we'd um, watch some of the dancers dance at the Apollo Theater, and it was Kwanzaa night, and it was so amazing. And I always felt like it should have been during Black History Month, but, you know, Kwanzaa is in December. But that is actually one of my favorite memories. Mm, so... Let's see, I have two more questions, but if you guys have any more questions, like I said before, comment down below. It could be anything. Miss Howard University, she is so intelligent and talented and just the complete essence of what a role model should be. So I'm, I'm just so honored to have you as a guest on my live series. I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for hopping on. Two more questions, and then if you guys have any questions, let me know. Okay, so. So since you are graduating Howard University in a few months, tears, what is after 
here this what are some of your goals what do you hope to achieve after you graduate from howard and what are some of the things that you may have lined up in the future okay the first part of your question broke up just a little bit but i think you I'm asked sorry. about like graduation plans mm -hmm. and like what are your goals after you graduate okay so um i just recently signed with my agent so i got my first agent so excited i signed with pantera murphy agency in new york city um they are a theatrical and tv and film agency so they've been sending me work i've been submitting for different auditions you know just hoping for something um ideally i would like to either work on a national tour, on a Broadway play or a musical, or on a cruise ship um, post graduation. Like, those are my top three things that I want to, or yeah, those are my top three that I would like to go into. Um, I wouldn't mind getting into regional theater just because of the fact that um, I haven't really had the opportunity to perform due to COVID. Here at Howard University, a lot of our performance opportunities were unable to come to fruition because of the scare of COVID-19 and being in the capital of the nation. Um, so I'm just ready to perform, honestly. Um, I am very blessed to have an agent to, you know, represent me and to make sure that my brand is saying what it is that I want to, you know, portray out to the universe as a Black artist. Um, and I'm just ready to hit the stage. I am so excited for you. I know that you will be so successful in the future and you are already successful now. So it is only up from here. And I cannot wait to say that my friend is on Broadway or she's on a cruise. Can't wait to tell people that. <laughs> so I, I mean, if you guys have, have not heard this girl sing, she is phenomenal. And when I tell you Thanks. phenomenal, and whenever I watch musical theater people, since I'm just, I just I'm acting as like, you know, that's what I love. Okay. I always watch musical theater people and I'm like, hmm, I want them to act more when they sing. And when I watched your video, you had a perfect balance of acting and singing. So I just want to commemorate you on that. She is phenomenal, guys. After live, follow her, go on her page, watch her content. So, so amazing. So my last question for you is, what is something that you hope to see change as a African-American female in the entertainment industry? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, one thing that I would like to see change in the entertainment industry as an African American female is the audiences of that attend these different shows. Um, I think it's about time that the black community becomes reemerged into all is extremely expensive finding ways for us to create funds to allow for black families and for black youth to come to New York and experience these once in lifetime stories being told by these talented artists and to experience things such as cabarets and symphonies and um, just different art forms at such an, a young age is really something that I want to see happen very fast. Um, one of the projects that I I want to start working on post graduation for sure is instilling more BFA programs in HBCUs. That's one of the things that I want to have as my legacy of a HBCU grad, a HBCU queen, and an HBCU queen who is a musical theater major. I feel like it's it shouldn't be the fact that Howard is the only HBCU with a BFA program. Um, while Howard is the Mecca, Howard is not the only HBCU. So continuing to instill the fact that we need more representation for other HBCUs to lift up other HBCUs and to encourage students to attend one of the 107. It doesn't have to be the top 10 or it doesn't have to be the top 20. Just showing that here are all of your options. This is what you can do as a Black performer. Here's how you can go become educated on how to act through a Black lens and how to 
navigate the world as a black performer, as a black artist. So yeah, that's what I want to see changed. So amazing. And I know that you are going to help make sure that that change happens. Like I said before, it is such an honor to have you as a special guest. And I'm so thankful that you were able to come. I have learned so much about you. Like I said before, guys, she's a change maker. She is a role model. She's an inspiration. <laughs> and you are just all around such an amazing, beautiful, multifascinated person. And I'm so honored to have you as my first guest. Miss Howard University, you are going to see her on that Broadway stage. You are going to see her name and lights. And I can't wait to say that. I knew her. That, that's my friend. That's my friend up there on that Thank stage. You. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know or we will end the live. I think we're gonna we're gonna end the live with with a good song. So let me find a song for a second. Of course. Well, thank you so much for having me, Kayla. And if you ever need me for anything else, you know, I'm always here. Um, it was such an honor. Okay, guys, we're ending this. We're ending this on this song, Burn Award. Okay, thank you so much again, Miss Howard University, guys. Clap it up for her. Thank you so much again. Such an honor. Bye, guys.